everyone, I'm Alicia here. Today I want to chat with you guys about the true cost of living in New York City and how I actually afford living here. We all know that New York City is one of the most expensive cities to live in, not only in the United States, but also in the entire world. And no thanks to greedy housing developers, inflation, and gentrification, the cost of living here keeps increasing. Therefore, I'll break down how much it costs me per month to live here. I'll be sure the exact amounts I spend on essentials such as rent, food, transportation, as well as how I budget. So without further ado, let's get into the video. The biggest expense that those who live within New York City, including myself, have is housing. I currently live in a pre-war rent stabilized apartment here in New York City, where I pay a monthly rent of $1,450. The legal regulator for my apartment is actually about $2,700 because my apartment is rent stabilized. I only paid a preferential rent of $1,450. Preferential rent is when landlords charge less than the legal regulated rent rate step by rent stabilization, often to the tune to hundreds to even thousands of dollars less per month. In other words, a substantial discount. The rent stabilization aspect of that is overseen by the New York State government, which basically means that landlords can only raise rents by a certain amount each year, often about 1 or 2%. On the other hand, landlords that oversee legal regulated rent apartments also known as market rate rent apartments strive to do what any other business person strive to do which is to make as much money as possible when you live in a legal regulated rent apartment or a market rate rent apartment the landlord can increase the rent by as much as they want to at the end of each lease renewal and that can be to the tune of hundreds to thousands of dollars in increasing your rent per year so if you have the option i do highly recommend that you look for a rent stabilized apartment as opposed to a legal regulated rent apartment. Okay, I know that was a mouthful, but housing is going to be your biggest expense when it comes to living in New York City. So in addition to housing and the rent that I pay for my studio apartment, which is $14.50 per month, I also have to pay my utilities for my apartment. So I'm gonna give you a breakdown on how much my utilities for my apartment cost. So believe it or not, my most expensive utility is actually my Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi costs an average of $89 per month, and I'll show you sort of a screenshot of the monthly bill that I get from my Wi-Fi provider. My second most expensive utility is my energy bill. My energy bill usually averages between $35 to about $45 per month, and my energy bill includes, I think, um, my light my fridge and just other things to sort of you know take up energy within this apartment now i'll also leave a screenshot on sort of like what my average energy bill looks like my last and least expensive utility bill is my gas bill my gas bill averages between 17 dollars to about 19 dollars per month which i am very happy about basically for my studio apartment as well as for the building that i live in our landlord pays for the bulk of our gas bill so he pays for our hot water and also our heat so my gas bill only includes the usage from my stove and oven outside of housing a huge expense when it comes to living in new york city is transportation within new york city there are several modes of transportation you can catch the subway you can catch the bus a taxi uber you can bike you can walk um you can also have your own personal vehicle but generally, most people here take public transportation. I typically take the subway, and with the subway, I often buy a weekly unlimited metro car. The weekly unlimited metro car is about $33 per week. And the reason I buy a weekly car as opposed to a monthly car is simply because the weekly car is about $33. The monthly car, I think, is like $140. And I am just someone I don't like having to pay a lot of money up front and so just breaking it down weekly to me um just makes a lot more sense i do think you save a bit more when you buy the monthly car but once again i don't want to spend 140 dollars at once and then like lose my metro card i also often walk a lot of places too i love walking i'm from down south where you know things are slow so i like to go outside often and take long walks around new york city one time i walked from Chinatown to Flatbush, Brooklyn just because I was just in a vibe and I often take like long walks like that often walking from you know downtown Brooklyn to the um, Pier 17 in Manhattan you know taking a walk across the Brooklyn Bridge or a walk across the Manhattan Bridge I love walking and walking is free. Another form of large expense when it comes to living within New York City is on food New York City has some of the best food that you could imagine. As you can see, 
Um, in my three years of living here, I have gained a lot of weight. If you see my chin, I'm on a weight loss journey now. I'm trying to lose some of the stuff that I have gained throughout the past few years. Before splurging on any outside or you know restaurant or street food, I do firstly do a lot of grocery shopping. So I often grocery shop at Trader Joe's once a month. I go to Trader Joe's and I do a huge grocery haul, and that usually comes up to about. $150 per month. I'll leave a screenshot of one of my recent receipts from Trader Joe's. I also do a lot of grocery shopping at Whole Foods as well. I like to shop at Trader Joe's for my groceries because for one, since everything at Trader Joe's is private label, it's generally less expensive to shop there than to shop at a larger, uh, more well-known grocery store. For example, at Trader Joe's if I wanted to buy some Oreos, which are called, I think, Trader Jojo's. They are only a dollar ninety nine. But if I were to go to a regular grocery store and buy name brand Oreos, those same Oreos will cost me seven ninety nine. And so, just at Trader Joe's, simply because everything is private label, it is generally less expensive than shopping at a regular grocery store. Whole Foods has a reputation of being extremely expensive, but honestly, let me tell you my secret. So basically, if you go to Whole Foods right when it opens, you can find a lot of items on sale. I usually go like right when it opens and I buy like meat on sale, I buy produce on sale, they have, you know, some you know, skin and hair care products on sale, vitamins on sale. Um, typically, if you go there right when it opens, you can buy things on sale. But also, just in general, um, Whole Foods can also be less expensive than other grocery stores if you buy things that are only the Whole Foods private label brand Whole Foods 365. Being that New York City is a large culturally diverse and dynamic city, there is a lot to do here when it comes to entertainment and just sort of like exploring all the cultural options that New York City has to offer. So when it comes to my miscellaneous spending on you know, entertainment and whatever, I would say I would probably spend on average about 150 per month on going to the movies, going to see a play on Broadway, going to bars with my friends, going to restaurants, uh, shopping, festivals, uh, concerts, uh, you know, sort of like museums, whatever I would say, on average about 150 per month on those sort of like miscellaneous items. I also have my sweet baby girl here, here who is my precious child. And I would say for her, I'll probably spend on average maybe 30 bucks per month buying her new food, and litter and you know cat toys and things of that sort so she is a part of my monthly budget and my baby girl so i'm going to quickly tally up sort of the cost of the things that i've mentioned in this video You know, a lot of people think that you need six figures to live in New York City and that isn't true at all and that's why it's very important to budget. When I first moved to New York City, I had no money and no job. My first job when I moved to New York City came about six months after me living here and it was at MTV Networks and that job was great but it paid minimum wage of $15 per hour which was about I think only like $20 nine thousand dollars or so per year and so because i came to new york city with no money and no job and then because my first job once i was employed was minimum wage i really learned the importance of budgeting and the importance of living frugally and the importance of living well below my mean luckily i no longer work minimum wage i am now working at cbs news and i have a real adult salary where I don't have to look paycheck to paycheck anymore but I still rely on my old budgeting tips and my old you know living below my means tips from back when I used to be underemployed. Creating a budget helps me remain within a state of financial stability and by financial stability I mean that I don't have to worry about not having money for rent or being in a panic that I can't afford any expenses that I may come across. I break down my budget in two ways a monthly budget as well as a weekly budget. My monthly budget includes my rent, which is $14.50 per month, as well as my utilities, of which I have three, my Wi-Fi, which averages about $89 per month, my energy bill, which averages about $40 per month, and my gas bill, which averages about $19 per month. My weekly budget includes my food, which I do the bulk of my grocery shopping at Trader Joe's and Whole Foods and my transportation of which I majority take public transportation. My weekly budget also includes some miscellaneous things such as um, you know going out to the movie theater, going out to the restaurants, 
um, general entertainment. After you create your budget, another thing that's very important is saving. It's important to save just as much as you're spending. So for me, whenever I get my deposit from my job, I make sure to transfer half of what's deposited into my account to my savings account, put up automatically. I don't touch half the money I make because for me, I feel comfortable when I have a cushion of savings that I could rely on. Growing up, my parents always told me to have about six months of emergency living expenses saved up. So I try to make sure that I have that six months worth of living saved up or more. Um, I don't feel comfortable spending money without having kind of like a cushion I can rely on if something were to happen. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my monthly breakdown on how much it costs me to afford living in New York City. In my videos, I strive to be as transparent as possible when it comes to my journey on living in New York City and I look forward to sharing with you a lot more on finances of New York City um, and my daily life and my journey to being within New York City. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and also leave any questions down below. I honestly do not know if I went in depth enough when it comes to the true cost of living in New York City. Um, so if you have any additional questions, just leave those down below and I will be sure to answer them for you either in my next video or I'll answer them, you know, for you in the comment section or you can send me a DM on Instagram at Mon and Alicia and we sort of, we sort of like chit chat there about, you know, finances in the city. But yeah, thank you. I will see you in my next video. Bye.